Hey, yo, Trippy, bro, switch it up. Okay, cool. I got it. Hey, if y'all like this video and y'all appreciated the work I put in, show your feedback by subscribing, man. It means a lot. It goes a long way, especially for things like motivation. Thank you. In this video, I made a rank of five UFC fighters that would beat Jake Paul in boxing. So, there's a bit of rules when it comes to this, right? So, obviously, we a bunch of us can think of a ton of guys that would beat Jake Paul. But this list is based off of not only guys that he would that would just outskill him in the boxing ring and would beat him, but guys that he would want to fight, guys that he would likely pick, obviously. And y'all, we already know Jake Paul likes to pick guys smaller than him. And he doesn't want to fight guys his size or real boxers yet. So it would be guys that he would underestimate. And you know Dana White is very reluctant to letting fighters out of their contracts. So this was a hard list to make. Because I really had to sit and examine the guys that Jake Paul has talked about. The guys that Jake Paul would be up for fighting if Dana let them out of their contract. And the guys that likely would take up the opportunity. And then on top of that, I can't pick guys because obviously I would just pick somebody like Israel Adesanya. Pick somebody like, oh, uh, freaking Francis Ngannou. Guys that he obviously wouldn't fight. And, you know, so I really had to really nitpick. So here's a list of reasonable guys that I think Jake Paul would give a chance in the boxing ring. And who knows? Maybe it might actually happen. So here's my list and let's jump into it. Number five. Nate Diaz so the only reason why Nate Diaz isn't really ranked higher on this list is because of the size and his style but whenever you look at it and you carefully examine Jake Paul's boxing style he's kind of that power puncher who gives it all early throws nice combinations has it all under control early in the fight and then crumbles as the fight goes on and whenever we watch the Ben Askren versus Jake Paul fight that is what we thought about whenever we gave Ben a solid chance to win. And maybe Jake would tire out and he'd be able to take the blows and damage from Jake Paul and be able to slow him down as the fight goes on, scoring maybe a TKO win or a clear decision due to Jake tiring out and Ben not going away. Well, Ben couldn't take the punch and Ben didn't have any type of boxing skill. Now, what is Nate Diaz's two main weapons? Is his gas tank and his boxing. That is the style that we were wishing that Ben Askren had when he was coming up against Jake Paul. But Nate delivers it in a vicious way. And he won't just sit there on the ropes and try to walk Jake Paul down and look for one shot like Tyron Willie did. Nate, if he senses that you're tiring out, he will nonstop stay in your face and nonstop bully you in things like the clinch. And with your backs against the ropes, he won't let off. The only problem is that Nate is a bit of a punching bag, so Jake will score a lot early. That can ultimately alter if he wins majority of the rounds. It can alter the judges' scorecards, but Nate is a serious threat to Jake Paul in the boxing ring due to how good of a boxer he is and the size. He had the same height, same reach, I believe, and all the contributing factors that he could give Jake Paul problems. Okay, with that being said, coming in at number four is Jorge Masvidal, street Judas himself. Nah, just kidding. Jorge Masvidal has been titled by a few UFC fighters, few UFC greats as the best pure boxer in the UFC. Now, Jorge Masvidal, we all know, has some slick hands, you know, and he has some legit one punch power KOing guys who are similar in size to Jake Paul, i.e., um, Darren Till, but you know, they got boxing gloves. How will that power translate? Which is why he's number four on this list. How is that one punch power going to translate in 10 ounce gloves? You know what I mean? And also with a guy the size of Jake Paul, but he may be able to take the punishment more from a guy like Jorge Masvidal in 10 ounce gloves. And obviously in four ounce gloves, Jorge has a massive chance of knocking him out. But with that being said, that doesn't mean that the power is completely gone. Jorge grew up in a boxing ring, like he said, and I believe him because he has some of the slickest hands in the UFC. Jorge also has a good gas tank, and he is very technical with his hands. Jorge also has one of those styles that mainly in the UFC struggled against wrestlers and coasting. something Two things that he got rid of, and unlike Tyron Woodley, it seemed like Tyron lost his killer instinct. Jorge 
if his durability or anything that has left him since the Usman fight, one thing that will never go away from Jorge Masvidal, and that is his killer instinct. The guy will finish you the moment he sees you hurt. That switch step combination, that, what is that, that overhand, that switch step overhand that he threw against Darren Till and knocked out Darren Till would create a lot of problems because it's coming from funky angles to a guy like Jake Paul. He's, it's something he's not used to. And also the speed and the technicality of his boxing would give, and the body shots would give Jake Paul problems. More so with the style of technically boxing with Jake Paul early until Jake Paul slows down and Jorge finishing him. Not just beating him, not letting him make it, but finishing Jake Paul in a violent fashion. The only reason why he's number four is that the good power that he has may not translate completely perfect into boxing and the fact that we don't know where his durability is but he had to make this list especially with the ongoing beef going on between those two jorge is one of the best pure boxers in the sport he could absolutely dominate a guy like jake paul for eight rounds number three is stephen thompson now this guy i really wanted to put at number one but i couldn't because of the size one yes i know i keep bringing that up but jake paul likes to punch guys he likes to fight guys smaller than him but stephen thompson the main thing and it's something that i didn't mention with jorge because he also has a good amount of this but it's stephen thompson's footwork and his style and the stephen thompson is a world championship level kickboxer the footwork and his hands would translate perfectly he has that perfect style to make you punch yourself out and miss and miss and miss and miss and him ultimately counter you or get you in the center of the ring and blitz in with awkward combinations and having you swing back and miss. It's just having his opponents punch themselves out and going up and finishing them in the first place. Now, Wonder Boy is a kickboxer and obviously in boxing he won't be able to use kicks. So how would that how would he translate in a style against Jake Paul? Well, Wonder Boy has much better boxing than Jake Paul, especially technically. Matter of fact, the only reason why I didn't put him in the footwork is just not even comparable. The only reason why I didn't put him at number one is because the durability, once again, which in my opinion may be even weaker than Jorge's, and the fact that Wonder Boy does make mistakes when you let him lead the charge. But, and Jake Paul does have, he is a good puncher. But in my opinion, this would be such a massive test for Jake because he'd really have to solve that puzzle of Wonder Boy in only striking. In only striking. And that is something that guys in the UFC haven't even done. And a 4-0 boxer would have to solve that. He would make Jake Paul look extremely silly out there. It's only if Wonder Boy was to make a mistake, Jake Paul would capitalize it on it. But due to the fact that there's a 10 count in boxing, Wonder Boy could just pop back up and not make the same mistake and just make him miss and make him look like an idiot out there while scoring on him easily this is why number one wonder boy is number three and above those other two guys now let's move on to the next guy number two kelvin gastelum so i know i said i wanted to put one wonder boy number one but really this would be the guy that i would throw if i was staying away and i and jake paul is causing a lot of ruckus over here and I wanted a guy to just go in there and shut him up. And a guy that I can trust is Kelvin Gastelum. Jake Paul just loses almost everywhere here. In the power exchange, I believe that Kelvin Gastelum may have even better power than Jake Paul. In the boxing exchange, J Kelvin Gastelum is just a more crisp, more accurate, especially with timing, just a much better boxer than Jake Paul and will walk Jake Paul down. And the conditioning, Kelvin Gastelum doesn't get tired. The body shot to Jake Paul won't do too much damage due to the fact that Kelvin Gastelum literally eats body kicks from guys like Adesanya and Jared Kennedy. So why is he number two? So the reason why Kelvin Gastelum is number two is because of the unlikelihood that he would fight. He is probably the most unlikely guy on this roster to fight Jake Paul. But why would why would I put him on here if it because he still is more likely than the other guys on the roster that I didn't name in this video. So I know that doesn't make a ton of sense, but let's say Kelvin Gastelum. I can think of a scenario where Kelvin Gastelum goes on a losing streak in the UFC, even deeper than he is now, and they cut him, and then he boxes Jake Paul. But that's why he's number two. But the durability, everything, it just X factors everything from Jake Paul. He has one of the clearest. He could possibly 
outclass Jake Paul and just simply outbox him, maybe in wild exchanges. Now, I'm not saying Kelvin's going to go in here and then just completely have a cakewalk with him, but I think that Kelvin won't slow down. And early it'll be competitive and they'll trade blows, but Kelvin will be there for the whole fight where Jake will slow down and Kelvin won't relent. And Kelvin is way more durable to take a guy like Jake Paul's blows, especially in 10-ounce gloves. And then the power will translate no matter what due to the fact that Kelvin Gastelum has significant power and it will translate to 10-ounce gloves. He would The things he would do to, to, to Jake Paul in boxing, I wish that we could send him over there right now. But he doesn't have as big as a chance as the next guy on this list. So before we reveal our number one spot, here's a few honorable mentions. Dustin Poirier, Conor McGregor, Kamaru Usman, Colby Covington, Paulo Costa, Khabib Nurmagomedov, TRT Vitor, Tyron Woodley. Okay, so now, number one, Anderson Silva. Say what you want, cry, bitch, moan, complain. I've been high on this fight for a long time. I even made a video about it. There is no fighter that would give Jake Paul one heck of a task that isn't a pro boxer than Anderson Silva at the moment. Anderson is taller, longer, has the higher striking experience, and is an actual striker, be the first striker that Jake Paul would fight. And not to mention, he is the most available, high-level UFC fighter that is able to fight Jake Paul at the moment. Not to mention, unless Jake wants to jump into pro boxers immediately, Anderson Silva would be a massive test for him and a great test for him, in my opinion, and would equal a great fight. The only thing is, is that Jake Paul fears that he won't be able to sell the pay-per-view and he would talk trash to Anderson and look like a, a jerk for majority of the buildup and we get technically put on blast against a guy like Anderson Silva. There is many reasons why Anderson has topped this list, but I already know what you guys are thinking as cons. Anderson is 45 years old. Anderson is a retired UFC fighter that has taken a lot of damage. Anderson doesn't have a chin. I get all those things. But Anderson Silva is one of the hardest guys to hit, even still to this day. A 45-year-old Anderson Silva gave Israel Adesanya, when he was coming up, a very hard time in the striking aspect. And I know what you guys can say. Izzy was taking it easy on him or whatever. No, Israel was trying to knock him out. A guy with this level of striking capabilities, we have yet to see a high-level striker go against Jake Paul. Not to mention Anderson Silva. The other reason why he tops this list is that he has boxing experience now, and he's beaten a pro-level boxer. I have to wait to see how he's going to look against Tito Ortiz, but I'm pretty sure that that'll just be more experience and free legacy to Anderson Silva because I think he's going to mop the floor with Tito Ortiz in a boxing ring. But on top of that, Anderson Silva is a legit middleweight who's also had legitimate success at 205, and he'd be able to hit Jake Paul back with that middleweight slash cruiserweight power that Jake Paul hasn't dealt yet. Not to mention the footwork, the speed of Anderson. Even still at 40, Anderson would be able to take the blows off Jake Paul. That is the only worry for a lot of you guys, me including, I'll admit, is can he take a, the blows off of a young progressing guy like Jake Paul? But the truth is, is that Anderson Silva has the skills, the footwork, the speed, the, hand, the power to make a guy like Jake Paul go belly up by the fourth or fifth round. Anderson also will show up in shape and be able to outbox Jake Paul for the majority of the fight. It's hard for me to even give Jake Paul a round if he was to box Anderson Silva. But if Jake Paul was up for the task, that'd be incredible for him and I would give him a lot of respect. Especially if he is to beat Anderson Silva in a boxing match. I would think that Jake Paul is ready for some of these amateur guys like a Tommy Fury for instance. Anderson Silva, I also believe, has a great shot at beating Tommy Fury as well. That's how high I am on this Anderson Silva fight. Will Jake Paul take it? Honestly, I doubt it, but man, would that be a good fight. And it's likely to happen. Let's not say, never say never. It's likely to happen due to Anderson's availability and his willingness to box. Now, if you agree with my list, go ahead and leave me a comment. If you don't agree with my list, leave me a comment, you know? This was hard because of all the rules that went into it, and I know it probably, I know you guys can name a bunch of UFC fighters. I could too. I could make this video a breeze and just name a bunch of obvious winners, but I didn't want to do that because it has to be guys that Jake Paul would box and that Dana would allow to box, which Dana wouldn't allow any of them, but it would just be guys that Jake Paul would pick, you know what I mean? And that was based off that and based off availability, and Anderson clearly tops this list. So, 
It's been your boy Trippy. Uh, if you like this video, please give it the feedback and subscribe. You know what I mean? It's been your boy Trippy, and I'm out, man.